those questions when we go to work. Well, I'm training you to be a better medical assistant. So if the patient has a cold and he cannot breathe through noise, so we cannot take some pictures. We'll come to that in a second. You can take this, it's not too much. We're coming. We're coming to that. Now, I'll, tell, I'll tell you a funny story about my first day uh, on the job in the hospital. I, it's my favorite story. <laughs> it sets stage for my entire medical career. So in any case, so what's your instruction? Oh, you know what else people like to do before they go see a doctor? Before they get into the lobby of the you know the, the waiting room, they know they're going to be for 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 a while in there. So what do you think some people do? Use the bathroom. Yes, that's true, but that doesn't you know. Eat some stuff. Eat something. Eat something, or a lot of them like to smoke. Yeah, smoke. So what's your instruction to the patient? Well, after, when I go to the doctor, I say, don't eat. Well, don't eat, it. don't drink, so do, don't, don't sit there, don't dollars, smoke. Yeah. That's right. So none of that stuff before. Do patients listen? No. No. Can we take an accurate oral temperature? No. Thank no. you. All right. Yes, it's a matter of choice. The most accurate temperature that you can acquire with a thermometer is the rectum. But let me tell you something. As I told you before in my previous lectures, don't come into the patient room and say, I'm going to take your temperature, drop your drawers. Yeah, just to see what to take out. This is, I, and I'm here to tell you, there's going to be a line out the door a mile long for you to take their temperature. Oh, I hear Steve is taking temperatures in the doctor's office. You really, you don't say. I'm telling you, these people, they're, they're all medicated out there. Just be careful about what you do, what you say, all right? So my first day on the job in the hospital, I showed up. I, my first job was as an orderly. I was, what, 19 years old, had to wear white. <laughs> anyway, I show up to the nursing station, and she says, oh, you're the new boy. I said, yes, ma'am, I'm the new boy. I said, all right, here's the clipboard. Go to the uh, closet over there, take a thermometer, and go take everybody's temperature in the, in the ward. Okay, so, all right, I go in. There are two thermometers, one red, one blue. I like the red one. So... I go and I take everybody's temperature, come back, she says, oh, aren't you nice? I said, uh, yeah, but why? She said, oh, you took everybody's rectal temperature. I said, no, I didn't. She said, which one did you take? Oral. I said, oh, you used a rectal thermometer. <laughs> Folks, I'm not sure how it is right now, but back then, red was rectal, blue was oral. Oh. So, <laughs> remember what I tell you, just be nice to your patients. <laughs> That was my first day. The, the very first thing I ever did in the hospital was that. After that, you can imagine how things went. In any case, axillary. Axillary is the best for kids. You can even give them a contest. They can stick it over there, but it's a little bit further away from the midline of the body. See, midline of the body keeps the most accurate temperature. While everything else can heat up or cool off, the middle, the core, always keeps the same temperature because your brain needs it. Vital organs need it. Okay, it needs to stay constant, right? Because the outside gets cooled off or heated up, hot day, cold day, whatever, right? But the inside, always 98.6. That's why the center of the body, the mouth, the rear end, and the axillary, you can stick that over here, okay? But this part will be just a few decimal points off from your rectal or oral temperature. So keep that in mind, all right? If somebody's borderline has a fever, Okay, or above average, if you took axillary, that means a few, like even 0.4 uh, decimals of, uh, of a degree will be uh, higher. So consider it that way, okay? So these are the uh, temperatures that you can get with a the thermometer. But there's a few other gadgets that we can use nowadays to get temperatures. Yeah. You may have seen the one from the ear, okay? okay. They call it tympanic. Right. They shoot off an infrared beam uh, into your, against your um, uh, tympanic or eardrum, tympanic membrane or, or the eardrum, the signal reflects back and gives you an excellent temperature reading. The problem is most people who take this temperature don't follow directions. If you ever read the instructions for this uh, for the scanner, it says, you know, pull back the ear, aim straight, and fire, and you'll get excellent temperature. How many people actually pull the ear back? Not that many, and the reason we do it is because the ear canal inside is a little bit angled and you actually have to pull it back and up just a little bit so the passageway for the beam is straight. If you don't do that, you're not going to the uh, uh, eardrum. You're actually hitting the wall of the ear and that thing is cooler. 
So you're going to get a wrong temperature. Or you're going to hit some earwax and the signal gets absorbed by the earwax. So is it good? Yeah, but you have to follow instructions. And the new one is it's called the temporal scanner. And remember, it's not a thermometer. These are scanners. They actually estimate, and it's a computer model in there, that actually estimates the temperature. Are they accurate? Yeah. Is it quick? Yeah. But it's only as good as the chart that the battery has and the person that you use, the, who uses it. Make sense? So make sure if you have these scanners, make sure that the batteries have been changed recently or they're fully charged. Because electronic devices, when they become less than optimally charged, they do funny things. Okay? So that's all I have to tell you. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay, let's move on to the pulse. Now, what is the meaning of the word pulse? It's the palpation of the... Palpation. Palpation means to touch. Yeah, feel the palpation. You were thinking maybe palpitation? Palpitation. But you see, the problem is you don't want to use the word palpitation because it actually means like fluttering of the heart. Yeah. Because you, when you're feeling the heart actually beating, there's something wrong. You don't naturally feel the heart beat, right? Do you feel it now? Do you feel your heart wobbling in the chest? No. It's just there and you are alive and you feel that it's there. So how can we, in simplistic terms, define what a pulse is? By the way, can anyone draw me a picture of pulse on the board? If you can't explain it, can you draw a picture? No. Can I draw one for you? Sure. Okay. I can do it even better. How can I define this? These are pictures, and, but that's the definition of the pulse. So how can we define what a pulse is? What can we say about it? First, the meaning of the word pulse. Anyone, anyone, anyone? Okay. Do you have a doorbell on your... Um, on your front door? No. You, different people come in differently, and you know who the, those people are. I mean, I have people that come to my house, and they go, oh. ring, 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 ring. I know who that is. And Or some people come in and go, ring. <laughs> I know who that is also. Yeah. Or somebody says, ring, 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 ring. I know who that is too. <laughs> so, eh, 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 or eh, they're exact opposites. So some people press and hold it in, and some people go, I hate both of them. I just like one, and just wait it out. And the other is, so one is a constant, and the other one is a pulse. So constant is the word that's the opposite of pulse. So pulse is on, off, on, off, start, stop, right? Okay, you can call it that. Yeah, yeah. You can call it that. That's fine. But something that starts and stops. Off, on, off, on, off, on. So let me tell you in one word how we use the word pulse. Well, you know what? Intermittent would be a good definition of the word pulse. Something that starts... And stop. Windshield wiper. Right? The opposite word is constant. So how do we define word, uh, the word pulse in medicine? Well, you know what? Pulse is a reflection. What do you think a pulse is a reflection of? Well, what does the pulse reflect? I'll tell you. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Yeah. Pulse is a reflection of your heartbeat. Pulse is a reflection of the heartbeat. But you know, I don't like heartbeat. I'm going to substitute heartbeat with... <laughs> 